I'm Taylor Smurl. And I'm Tommy Smurl. And this is... Neat. Neat. All right. This week on the podcast, uh, we talked all about the history of mulled wine. And we decided that we had to make it for... It's another one of those festive drinks this time of the year that you can share, you know... You, you can have it nice and warm or chilled, whatever you prefer. And there are so many different takes on it uh, from all around the world. Uh, it's something that's been around since the ancient Greeks and Romans. So we have a lot of time <laughs> for different recipes to occur. And you know how they spread it so far? How? They were Roman. Oh, uh, I, bro, Rome, Roman. Yes, you had to be well, there. <laughs> our, hey, hey, that's all right. That's a great transition, because speaking of Romans, I decided for my version of mulled wine, I was going to attempt to recreate uh, an ancient Roman recipe for it. It's what they call Conditum Paradoxum, and that is a white wine base. Uh, it's got a very different spice profile than most mulled wine, so I was fascinated by that. It sounded yummy. That's what I'm going to try. All right. So the first step in this recipe is to make sort of a honey wine syrup that I'm then going to infuse. So the base for that is going to be a cup of honey and about a half cup of the white wine that I'm going to use. So it's wine and honey. Now I'm just going to jump over the stove and let this come up to a boil. Okay, so real quick, while I've got my hot honey wine syrup here, I'm going to infuse it with the spices for this recipe. Now like I said, the uh, spice profile for this is really unique. Um, it's using uh, peppercorn, dates, saffron, and uh, fennel. I'm using fennel because the original Roman recipe called for mastic. The tree sap is a little hard to find, but a lot of fennel is a good modern day substitute for this. It's sort of got that pine tree flavor to it. It's sort of got a fennel flavor, mastic does. So this is how I'm going to bring that flavor in. I'm going to use about a teaspoon of this. Almost sounds like an hors d'oeuvre. Now I'm going to use green peppercorns. Uh, I think the original recipe calls for maybe calls for black peppercorns, but I like green peppercorns. They're a little earthier. They still bring that spice. I think they're going to really work well with these flavors. Just a pinch of saffron, which we all know is expensive as heck. And uh, if you can't find saffron or you don't want to spend the money, um, you can sub in some like turmeric. And then lastly, I'm going to add in uh, a couple chopped dates and some bay leaves. That's right. good for the saffron. It hasn't had a date in a while. Saffron's pretty popular. I don't know if that, <laughs> I don't know if that joke reads. Maybe the fennel. I don't, I don't know why I'm, fennel would never get laid. I don't know why that was where my brain went. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I'm going to let this simmer on the stove for about 10, 20 minutes just to infuse it. And you want to simmer this on a very low setting because honey loves to boil over. So, all right, I will be right back with this. Okay. Now I have my infused honey wine syrup with my whole flavor profile. What I'm gonna do now is strain this and uh, top it with the remainder of my wine. A generous pour, the whole bottle. Well, the recipe is based around one bottle. So, Looks uh, like a good 2020 drink. <laughs> yeah, right, and now you just <laughs> take it to the you know, that would not be appropriate because I haven't chilled it yet. So I'm going to chill mine uh, while mine's chilling. Dad, I think you've got another recipe for us. Well, yours is from the ancient Romans. Mine is a little more modern time, and it is more of an English recipe that was passed over. We're going to begin. We have to have a pot. Let me grab my pot. A pot? I, Lots of I have pot. my pot. The first thing we do is we add water and sugar. Now, so, so we put that we, on the burner to boil it until all the sugar is melted into the water and we've got sugar water. So a light simple syrup. Yes. I'll be right back after I put this on the burner. Sorry, I had to give a dinner order and fries if they have them. <laughs> so now that I've got the simple syrup baking, not just sugar water, it's a simple syrup. I now add the rest of my ingredients. All right, I've already taken an orange and squeezed that. So I needed to juice a half of a medium orange. Dad, did, a, what? did you juice that? Did you juice that medium orange or was it? My barback took care of that for me. Yes, my barback mom. Okay. And she also 
zested the orange for me as you zest, uh, zest a medium orange and add that in as well. Okay. So I've got that right here with my orange juice. Thank you, mom. Yes, thank you, mom. And then I'm going to add 20 cloves now that I know what a clove is. I'm glad for this recipe specifically because wine mulled with garlic might be good for attracting and then capturing vampires, but does not sound tasty. No. All right, let's see. So I got to put 20 whole cloves in. So there's four. You could maybe use a vampire right now to help you count. 18, 19, 20. I think that's the part of vampire lore I wish got expressed more is that they are fixated on counting things. Five, five cloves we have. That's my count clovula. Then we need two cinnamon sticks and we need two star of anise. But if you don't have them, sometimes you have to use anise extract. I, I, I just didn't have any of that. So you got to use some anise extract. Now, my simple syrup is making over on the stove. So now I'm going to take all these spices and go add that and just let it boil for a minute and then reduce the heat to a simmer. I will be right back. Okay. All right, so I've got all my ingredients in there. And after about 20 minutes of simmering, then I'm going to add my wine. Their recipe called for a dry red wine. So I decided to get a really good one. And this, there's, you got good value in this box. And that's my Franzia box of red, dry red wine. Dad, I don't want to be that bartender, but I believe it's pronounced Franzia. Franzia. I'm just trying to help you win some culture points. All right. Franzia. Oh, okay. It's my Franzia. That sounds now, like the next fantasy kingdom in the Princess Switch universe. All right. What are we doing next? All right. I need three cups of my Franzia. So as you can see, I'm putting it in there. We have our... <laughs> Franzia. Now I'm going to go add that and let that be warming on the stove. Just for measurement equivalence, Dad is using three cups because that is roughly one 750 milliliter bottle. Yes, thank you for helping me with that, Tater. I, it is. It does call for a whole bottle of wine, but if it doesn't call for a whole box of wine. So I had to measure that. So. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, I'm gonna let mine chill. Dad's gonna let his infuse, and we will be right back with our finished product. Meet you with the good stuff. Passage of time. Ta -da. Ta -da. All right. So I have my my weird Roman mold wine. Dad has his super normie Victorian England mold wine. It's from jolly old England. I learned it from Charles Dickens. Right. Is, did you make a smoky bishop? Is that what you did? Hmm. No, it's not legal in our state to smoke a bishop. I'm gonna leave that as it is. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's try it. All right. It said it's best if it's served in some type of mug, so I've got me a little mug here. Now, are you serving yours warm or cold? Oh, it's warm. I'm serving mine chilled, as that is how the Romans would have had it, but I will say I think this recipe would work fine hot as well. And I'm gonna leave a little room in the top because it suggested that you could add a shot of amaretto or rum if you so desired. And I desired amaretto. The fun pain now of these meat videos is like, how many ways does dad find to sneak amaretto into a drink? I've been able to do it pretty successfully. Yeah. Several in a row. All right. Mm. Cheers. Cheers. I feel like I should know the Roman cheers. Gallia est in Europa. Germania est provincia. What do these things mean? Gallia est in Europa means France is in Europe. And Germania est provincia means Germany is a province. That's what I remember from junior high Latin. That's all I can remember other than Femini et puellae est pulchrae. And that means women and girls are beautiful. Okay. That's all I ever learned from that class. Okay, well, okay, all of that. Cheers. Mm. I think I finally found a way to drink wine that I enjoy. Give me some flavor notes, Dad. You catch it right on the back of your throat, and it's very fruity, All but right. it's not 
it's not too sweet though. Even with that sugar syrup in there, it's not too sweet. And as it, as it sits there, the longer it sits there, I can kind of feel those spices coming through. I feel like that's how a good mulled wine should work. Like if you're hit right up front, especially with like cloves and star anise, that can be pretty confrontational spice wise. Mm -hmm. You don't want to taste them up front. You want to have that nice gathering warmth on the back of your palate with pretty intrusive spices, I think. So that that's a yeah. good, that's a well-balanced recipe. Yeah, I like that because like you don't taste it right away. It's after it's in there, you know, and had a chance to <laughs> infuse you. Then you start tasting those other things and feeling them. You kind of feel them a little bit. I mean, I know from knowing you, you're not the biggest wine drinker. So I'm glad to see you enjoy wine. And that's a solid recipe. Yeah, very good. Even with the Franzia. Even with the Franzia. So I think that the Conchitum Paradoxum is, uh, it's really cool. It's such a departure from traditional mulled wine. It's very earthy. It's very bright. It's very floral. Um, I think a good dry white wine is what you want to use. And that's what I use. That works great. I think this drink plays a little sweet. It's based on the ancient Roman proportion, so this is what it would have been. But I think if it plays a little too sweet for you, as it plays for me, you could actually add a little bit of gin. Well, you know what they say. More booze makes everything better. I'm going to garnish this with a lemon, which I don't think historically makes sense. But, uh, but you know, it looks nice. Well, it looks like iced tea. Maybe you could call that Roman tea. How do you find a better name than Catedum Paradoxium? Like, easy for you to say. That's why, because I could never pronounce it or remember no, it. It's not easy for me to say. I've had to look at the pronunciation 18 times during this one recording. I know, that was a sarcastic comment. <laughs> Super not easy for me to say. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I will say that just a little bit, I think I have maybe like a half ounce. I eyeballed my chin, but I, that was about a half ounce. Uh, in there, in, in the base of the glass, it, it dries it a little bit. It brings up that nice floral, like vegetal quality that you want and uh, it marries well with all the other spices. Even if you're not a fan of mulled wine, I'd say you could give this a try if you like white wines, if you like honey wines, um, if you're a fan of cider, uh, yeah. Amaretto really works with this one too. So now you've got two holiday drinks, Dad. You you like the coquito, and now you now you've got your your mulled wine. It's gonna be a jolly holly Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got a lot of box wine to go through, so I guess it will. That's right. I've got some more in the box here. I can make some more. There you go. Yes, sir. Well, Here's my trusty box of wine. I'll make it through Christmas. Beautiful. What more could you ask for? Mom right. said it tastes a little like Robitussin, so I don't know. There I like Robitussin. Good. I like Pepto-Bismol, too. I don't know what to do with that information, <laughs> although I do think it might be troubling. Just as a reminder, here on Meet the Boozecast, we do not recommend <laughs> drinking for recreation Robitussin or Pepto-Bismol. Cheers, Tater. It's been real. Cheers, Dad. Well, uh, as always, if you are interested in either of these recipes, they will be listed down below. And of course, if you would like to uh, find us on social media, we are Neat Boozecast on Instagram and Twitter. If you would like to email us with uh, episode suggestions or questions, uh, we are neattheboozecast at gmail.com. If you would like to join our Patreon, you can get episodes themed around your personal questions. You can get stickers, you can get coasters. There's all sorts of fun rewards there. Uh, and we super appreciate your support. And uh, Dad started a Facebook group for us, right? We got a neat Facebook group. Join us there. We can discuss them. I know how to do Facebook. It's the only place I have friends. That's why I like going there. You have friends here right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm your friend. You're my family, though. You have to be my friend. You made a friend. <laughs> Oh, good. Well, I claim you as my friend, Tater. <laughs> well, good. Uh, uh, I have been Taylor Smurl. I've been Tommy Smurl. And this has been... Neat! <laughs> Franzia, if you're watching, look, we used you.